Good morning, Known Rev. Good morning. Thank you all for joining into this morning's uh, Monday morning devotional call. Um, my name is Gloria Strait. I'm the co-host of Own Rev uh, morning Monday morning devotional, um, along with uh, Dr. Holland Meyer. And um, this morning, I will be giving um, what God has placed on my heart to share with you guys. And um, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So <clears throat> this morning, I am going to speak on salt and light, you know, to be salt and light in the world. And um, the reason why... You know, I believe God placed this um, subject on my heart is because, of course, this is Christmas season. And uh, honestly, you know, God gave us the best example of salt and light, which is Jesus Christ. You know, um, you know, whenever you think of salt, I don't know. I, I, I know many of you all know I love to cook. So whenever I do think of salt... I think of flavor, you know, and God, oh my goodness, he gives a lot of flavor, you guys. He is the most flavorful person I know in this world. And, you know, salt, whenever you cook, if you don't put salt in it, it is like the most blandest meal. You could put all other seasonings, you could put pepper. You could put garlic, you could put um, paprika. I mean, you could put a whole bunch of seasonings on a piece of chicken. But if you ain't got no salt, it's, it's not going to taste all that good. <laughs> Whether it's sea salt, regular salt, um, a flavored salt, you know, you can put some lemon on there, but it's, it's still not going to taste as good as if you put a little salt on there and <laughs> with that illustration we we need to be salt in this world on the earth you know we need to put a little flavor which is spreading the love of Jesus Christ everywhere we go you know so even if you're at work if you're at school if you're amongst family that you know that needs that salt and you're not there to sprinkle on little Jesus, um, trust me, that atmosphere is going to be bland. It's going to be, oh man, like what's, what's up with this? So I'm going to actually read uh, Matthew 5, starting at verse 14. I mean 13, I'm sorry. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out <clears throat> and trampled under people's feet. You are the salt, I mean, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to mean to all in the house in the same way let your light shine before others so that they may be i mean they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven and <clears throat> yes verse 13 it says you are salt of the earth but we can't lose our saltiness you know <laughs> we gotta be salty that sounds so so strange I got to be salty. Yes, you got to be salty. You you can't lose your saltiness. You can't lose that punch of, and that's just pretty much saying, you can't lose the zeal of of the Lord. You know, you can't, you can't lose your hope. You can't lose your faith. You can't lose all that saltiness within you whenever you, whenever you become a Christian and whenever you, uh, receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, man, you become salty. And the Bible verse is just simply saying, don't lose your saltiness. And if you lose your salti saltiness, you know, people aren't going to be able to um, grasp the flavor of Jesus within you 
if you lose your hope, if you lose your faith, if you, um, if you lose your love, your compassion, if you lose all of that, then you're not salty anymore. So one question to ask this morning, am I salty? So, you know, ask yourself, am I salty? Am I salty enough to put flavor or bring flavor to wherever atmosphere I, I'm in? And also, it, it also comes hand in hand with salt and light. So in verse 14, it says, you are the light of the world, a city on the hill that cannot be hidden. So if you're salty, then you're a light as well. And I don't care how uh, dark it is at night. <clears throat> I, I, I don't care uh, if you're in a dark spot. If there's a little ounce of light, if there's one star in the sky, it will illuminate somewhere. You know, you will see that one little star in darkness. Like, let's say there's no moon and there's like one little star. You're going to still see that star star in the midst of all the darkness. If you, if you go in a room or in a closet and it's completely dark and your cell phone turns on, it will illuminate the whole closet. It shoots. If you go to a house that is dark and the power's out, you know, we've been having some bad weather lately. <laughs> In some places, I'm sure that st thunderstorm and all that rain done, um, you know, turned off the power. And you might, you might have just one little candle. If you light that little candle, which gives light, it will illuminate the whole room, right? So in Matthew, um, you know, we are told um, that we are salt and light of the earth. You know, salt is used to not only add flavor to food, but, you know, it also can preserve and clean. A side effect of consuming salt might be excessive thirst. So how do we compare to salt? As followers of Christ, we are called to preserve goodness in society and defer any corruption. We help others cleanse their lives and find hope in Jesus, which then creates a thirst for God. You know, it says you are salt. I mean, you are light of the world. A city on the hill cannot be hidden. Matthew 14. You know, light makes it possible to navigate through the darkest of nights. The verse in Matthew re uh, references a city on a hill because the lights of, a, of the city can be seen for miles assisting travelers with direction. You know, a lot of y'all know I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas, right? And a lot of y'all are from Corpus Christi, Texas. And <laughs> I love whenever different friends of mine that have never been to uh, Corpus comes in. And they come in the Cal Allen way. And uh, we have a lot of refineries here in Corpus Christi. And so from a far distance, a lot of people be like, man... I thought you said Corpus was a small city. I'm like, it is. And what they're seeing are all the refinery lights. And it makes it look like it's like New York or something. You know, because from a far distance, it looks like, oh, man, they have a lot of a lot of lights. You know, a lot of tall buildings. And as, as you get closer, it's like, oh, those are refineries, right? But it's true, you know. You know, a light, you know, you can see those from miles and miles away. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Uh, a lot of times whenever people come visit, it's like, oh man, Corpus is a big city. It's like, no, it's small. But the light, <laughs> the lights on the refineries, they glow so bright. It's like, oh man, I can see those miles away. All right. So, um, when we follow Jesus, the light of the world, we reflect his light and point others in his direction. So, to wrap it up, let's focus on how we can be salt and light in our everyday lives. It starts by doing one thing out of the ordinary, whether it's be uh, whether it's getting out of our comfort zone and sharing our love for Jesus with a friend, you know, who may not know him, or talking to someone um, at dinner, you know, just to be listening, uh, you know, just a listening ear after they have. A bad day, you know, just being a good friend can be a salt 
um, and light moment for you. You know, from the smallest change to the uh, grandest gestures, you know, I pray that we become salt and light in everything we say and do. And that's what I got this morning for you guys, you know, um, <clears throat> with, with Christmas being here, you know, this is the holiday season. Everybody want to be some salt and light, but I encourage everybody to be salt and light after the holidays, you know, it could just be one little thing that could, um, help change somebody's life that can help, um, just turn around a circum, uh, you know, a circumstance that they might be going through, you know, a co-worker at work, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I'm like a walking magnet to be, um, I guess a sounding board to people. I can go to Sam's H-E-B and wait in line. And then almost every time I'll meet somebody in a line, in a long line, so we have time to talk, or they have time to talk to me, and they'll tell me their whole life story, <laughs> and it happens all of the time, and it's cool, though, it's cool, because I could be that listening ear, and I might say one thing, like, you know, just give it to God, and they'd be like, man, I really needed to hear that, so it could be just getting out your comfort zone to listen to somebody in a line just to share a little light and a little salt in their life that could change their whole, whole, whole atmosphere, the way they're, they're feeling, they, the, the way they might look at things. So you have the opportunity to be salt and light. So I pray that, uh, you know, everybody, you know, grabs hold of that word this morning. I'm going to go ahead and close, close us out in prayer. Lord God, first of all, thank you for being God. Thank you for being Jesus. Thank you for just being everything that we could possibly ever need, ever hope for, ever, you know, need in our lives, you know. And I just pray for everybody on the call, on and off the call, um, that we can be salt and light to this world, that we can be um, bold for you, that we can show your love purely, um, to everybody that we come in contact with, that we can just make a difference somehow, some way, whenever you give us the opportunity, Lord. And I just thank you and, and bless you. And I pray for people that are traveling, um, to their destinations. I know some people are stuck at the airport because of the snow and the, the bad weather, but I just pray just a hedge of protection over people driving, coming and going. I just also pray for just this world, Lord, that, um, people who believe in you will be bold and stand for you. God will be bold and be the salt and light of this world. Um, so, other people can come and draw closer and draw nearer to you. I just thank you for what you have done, what you're going to do and what you've already done. And we just give your name, all the praise and all the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining in to the own rev. Um, Monday morning devotional. Um, we will have this, uh, posted on the, Facebook, uh, wall and our group. And, um, you know, as Dr. Meyer says, stay classy folks. God bless you guys.